whatever happened to the great American dream? No, 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 Honey, what is it? Are you all right? Oh, it was awful. There was just, and, and then there was the, oh, I just had the great American dream. Oh. Oh. Poor baby, it's all right. You're uh-huh. not in America, you're in Canada. You have the Canadian dream. Oh. That's it. Frantic Time News, always first, always on top of world events. Today, we're bringing you coverage of the Progressive Conservative Leadership Convention. I'm Mike McMichaels, and we're broadcasting from our special news desk deep in the Ottawa Civic Centre men's washroom. Right, Huey? Uh, uh, just a minute. Stop reading the walls. We will be interrupting frantic times in order to bring you up-to-the-minute updates as they happen. All the drama, all the excitement. Just as if we were really here. We are really here, Huey. Now let's go to our panel of experts who are standing by to... Uh, They're not here, Mike. What do you mean they're not here? They're at the Crosby Hospitality booth getting tanked. (laughs) Fine. Um, Here's Huey P. Carp with a list of the candidates. UAP Carp here with a list of the candidates. It should be an exciting convention, especially with the likes of Joe Clark, Brian Mulrooney, Claude Wagner, Flora McDonald, George Hees. Huey, that was the 76 convention. Do you have any more up-to-date list? Sorry. <laughs> Must have mixed it up with the historical material we had. Here, uh, yeah. here it is. <clears throat> Sir John A. McDonald. Huey, never mind. The candidates are Joe Clark, Brian Mulroney, John Crosby, David Crombie, Peter Pocklington, Michael Wilson, John Gamble, and Neil Fraser. And Huey? R. B. Bennett. No. <laughs> now, Huey, you've been on the floor, and I want you to tell us what strikes you about the delegates. Huey P. Carp here with what strikes me about the delegates. Well, Mike, first of all, I'd say the delegates are all white. I mean, I thought Canada was an ethnic mix. Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs> We'll have predictions on each of the ballots as the results are fed into our powerful Frantic Times computer. The Commodore Vic-20. Yes, thank you. (laughs) Oh, look, look, I I spelled my name with it. Yes. There's an E in Huey. (laughs) Let's go to the floor for a report from Ted Crinkle. Ted? Thanks, Mike. You know, probably the biggest story next to the leadership race has to be the intense heat down here on the floor. It is hot. Let's find out how some of the delegates managed to stay standing. Um, excuse me, sir. Yes? Oh. Oh, Oh, my. Um, excuse me, this man here has fainted. Uh, Oh, good. Here come two St. John ambulance attendants. Oh. Uh, Oh, Oh, my. They fainted as well. Ah, but here come several policemen to their aid. Uh, Oh. Oh, my, Every, everyone's fainting. Uh, oh, but wait, he, here's a man who seems to be as cool as a cucumber. Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, can you tell us, how are you managing to stay so cool? <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> You've filled your pants with crushed ice. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> the only way to stay cool. <laughs> well, yes, but the ice is melting and your pants are getting soaked. I mean, what will people think? Oh, Probably that I'm a Clark supporter. <laughs> this is Ted Crinkle signing up. Hello, I'm Premier Richard Hatfield. Now there's a wine that comes from Britain. A royal wine that is so delightful it was named Princess Diana Wine. Now you too can get drunk on Princess Diana. You've heard the lies, now taste the truth. (laughs) Every bottle is approved by Princess Di herself. This is the perfect wine for those awkward occasions when you must make a toast. It's really a premier wine. Princess Diana Wine, the official wine of the next New Brunswick election. Houston, this 
this is Space Shuttle Challenger EVA. It's Go Davis, spacewalking in the shuttle cargo bay. Roger, Challenger. Everything all right up there, Sally? Nothing I can't handle, Houston. <laughs> Touche, Sally. What? We're closing down communications for the next ten minutes. Roger, Houston. We'll await your call at 1845. Over and out. Roger. Over and out. Well, that's it for a while, Vince. Sally, have you seen my solar test kit? Uh, no, it might be in the exercise area, Vince. Uh, thanks. Hey, Sally, when do we have a meal break? Well, the flat plan calls for a rest break and then a two-minute correction burn. But I'm hungry now. Yes, Dave? Sally, everything checks out in the cargo hold. The arm is latched down and the synchronizer is go. Good work, Dave. Sally, I gotta go wee-wee. I told you to go before your spacewalk, Dave. But I have to go again real bad. Well, you'll have to hold it. you got to complete the satellite deployment list. Uh-huh. Over and out. What was that? Uh, nothing. Not nothing. <laughs> okay, who broke my good Hasselblad camera? Ray did. Did not. Did too. Did not. Did too. Did not. Okay, you guys. Well, both of you clean up that mess or you'll go to your hammocks with no anti-motion sickness pills. No. I'm going to cut off my air supply until I turn blue. Oh, go ahead. You won't get your EVA tomorrow. Uh, then how come Dave got to do his space walk? Yeah. He was a good boy and he got all his checklists done on time. Browner. <laughs> well, I got to do infrared photography in this orbit. No, you don't, young man. You purge those air recirculators. Then we'll talk about infrared photography. Can I do a yaw pitch maneuver? Not while Dave's spacewalking. I'm Flight Commander and you won't let me do anything. Buzz Aldrin let us do yaw pitch maneuvers. I don't care. The Russians get to do yaw pitch maneuvers anytime they well, want. Well, we're not Russians, are we? Now purge the CO2. Go on, scoop. Oh, I'm back. How many times do I have to tell you not to slam the airlock door? Oh, gee, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I gotta go to the bathroom. Dave, anchor your boots at the door. Oh. What's for dinner? Liver in a tube and tang. Ew. I hate liver. I hate tang. I hate it. Now that's eating. enough out of all of you. <laughs> uh, Challenger, Challenger, this is Houston. Over. Reading you clear, Houston. Over. Sally, is, is that crying we hear? Don't Over. worry, Houston. Nothing a woman can't handle. <laughs> this is Mike McMichaels and Huey P. Carp with another conservative convention report from our Frantic Times broadcast booth. Let's see what someone wrote about Clark in Stall 3. <laughs> Hey, didn't I just see John Crosby walk out of here? Never mind, Huey. <laughs> now here's Huey P. Carp with some comments. Huey? Huey P. Carp here with some comments. I've talked with some of the delegates, and I think a majority would throw their support behind anyone who promises better washroom facilities. <laughs> this is really pathetic in here. I think, I think I'm going to complain to Diefenbaker about this, because I think Huey. Deep is the, person, the kind of person Huey. who wouldn't allow... Huey! a few years ago. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you remember that train that went across Canada? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Derailed in Mississauga. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Let's go back to the convention floor with another special report from Eric Palepot. Eric? Lance Mike. Eric Palepot here in the Peter Pocklington camp. Even though he doesn't have a snowball's chance at the Civic Center to win the leadership, Pucklington supporters are still managing to sing up a storm in an effort to rally some support with the Peter Pucklington campaign theme song. He's kind of short, he's got a beard, he levitates, that's pretty weird. It's Peter Pucklington. He's got a wife, she looks real nice, he wants to put civil servants on ice. He's Peter Pucklington. Let's pay a flat rate of income tax and give Parliament Hill the ag. Let's get Canada moving again by selling out to Americans. He's right, he's right to bright, he's wealthy, so he must be bright. He's Peter Parklington. He's as subtle as a mallet. He'll be gone by the first ballot. He's Peter Parklington. 
If he has any trouble getting votes, he'll give everyone a Christy note. He's got big mega bucks to spend. He's got favors he could lend. And if you vote for him real quick, you can sleep with Gretzky's stick. Cause he's Peter Come on, uh, drive past me or something, huh? Stop following me, go somewhere else, maybe a murder or something, huh? Go on, uh, oh, no luck. Better pull over. Oh, if I get one more ticket, I lose my license. Um, hi, officer. <laughs> Do you know you were speeding, sir? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, um, see, I have a very good excuse. Right, I've, uh, heard them all. Ah, uh, well, uh, my wife's pregnant. I've heard that story. Um, I'm getting married, and, uh... Heard that story before, too. How about the story about I'm a doctor and I need a, uh... Oldest story in the book. How about the story of the Bjumplum people? What? The spaceships from the planet Bjumplum have landed, and I have to send them away with my magic fairy dust, or they'll send an evil ray that'll turn all the people on our planet into a sort of jello. Right. Follow me, then. You'll get there faster. Right, thanks. Looking for a good trailer park this summer? Please drive on down to Chester Spivey. The trailer park is on a dive. So bring your kids and dogs and wifey. It's busy as a big beehive. Find a spot to park your trailer. You might run into Norman Mailer. Rent a boat if you're a sailor. Water by the pail or bucket. It's, it's in the lake just down the street. Ten miles if you go by feet. Send barbecue big clubs of meat. And then just sit around and hang around and look around and wait around until you eat. eat. Lake Makushi's full of water. It smells and tastes like it all. But you will swim there when it's hotter. It's so much fun, it's like the water. So just remember good old Chester. This trailer park is just the best. We interrupt frantic times for this special conservative convention update. I'm Mike McMichaels. And I'm Huey Picard. Eight hours into the convention, and we're still waiting for the first ballot. (laughs) We have fed the results of our special frantic times poll into the computer. What does it say on the screen, Huey? Huey P. Carp here with the results of the frantic times poll. And what does it predict for a winner on our screen? (laughs) Pac-Man. Pac-Man is on the screen? Pac-Man all the way. He's better known, he has a bigger following, he's popular all across the country, the French love him, and he was Premier of New Brunswick for five years. He was? That's what Richard Hatfield told me. But if Joe throws his support behind Donkey Kong, it'll be real close and he'll need 200000 to win. To win the leadership? No, to beat me. Yeah, okay. Let's go to roving reporter Erica Palepot. Erica? Erica Palepot here with a supporter of Joe Clark. Rafer Joe, he's no phony. Rafer Joe and Beefaroni. What's your name, sir? Newton. Newton Phoebe. Ah, a Martian. Uh, He's fainted, uh, probably from the heat. Wake up, sir. Ooh, antennae. 
You're an alien. Oh, no, sir, uh, that's my headset. But you've got a ray gun. Uh, no, that's my microphone. You're going to cave my head in, aren't you? Uh, no, I want to know about your leader. Ooh, you are a Martian. <laughs> Mr. Phoebe, I just want to know why you support Joe Clark. Oh, he's dynamic. He's thrilling. He goes to luncheon. I can't keep up with the guy. This has been Erica Palepot sending it back to Frantic Times. Yes, sir, may I help you? Why, yes, you may. Thank you very much. I'd, uh, I'd like to buy a pair of casual shoes. I mean, if it's, if it's no trouble. No, certainly, sir, it's no trouble at all. I mean, I... I wouldn't want to put you out. Uh, you wouldn't be putting me out. It's my job. What a marvelous attitude. You know, I, I wish more people were as unselfish as you are. Yes, well... Uh, oh, oh, excuse me. How rude of me. I'm sorry. I forgot to ask you. How are you doing? I'm fine. Really? Everything's going perfectly well. You're not just saying that. Uh, were you looking for canvas shoes or running shoes? I, I don't know. What do you think would suit me best? I couldn't say. I don't know you. Well, that's the pity of it, isn't it? The city just just builds walls between us. <laughs> we don't really know each other, do we? Perhaps if you told me the size. Or perhaps if I if I told you some of my life goals, my my beliefs, my hopes, my my aspirations. And the size. Ten and a half. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, <laughs> listen to us. Sir, oh, please, please, call me Ted. I'll get a nice white runner in your size. And, and what should I call you? Miss, or ma'am. Oh, a woman of mystery, is that it? <laughs> no, a sales lady. Oh, no, no, you're, you're more than just a salesperson. You're, you're a human being. I serve hundreds of people every day. They can't all treat me as a human being. Sure they can. No, they can't. And I can't treat them as a human being either. Sure you can. No, I can't. Look, sociologists have shown a person can only assimilate a society of up to 90 persons. So uh, unless you live in a tribe in Kenya, it's impossible to treat everyone as human beings. The I-Thou relationship, which can't speak of, is impossible to sustain in a city of two million, and so we must be content with the less satisfactory dehumanizing I-It relationship. We have no choice. Sure we do. <laughs> We don't. Here are your shoes. Thank you. You'll notice that they are leather uppers with a crepe sole. They're very reasonable, too. Are they? And they're well made. Oh. And I think you'll find... Stop looking at me that way. What way? You're looking at me like I'm some sort of human being. <laughs> but you are. No, I'm not. I'm a faceless servant, and let's just leave it at that. Oh, okay, fine. Now, do you want to try them on? No. You don't? No. You don't want to walk around in them? No. Well, all right. I'll just pay for them and go. Uh, well, that's fine, then. How much are they? Uh, they're twenty nine ninety five. Okay. Here, there you go. Here's your change. Right, thanks. You're welcome. Goodbye, Ted. Goodbye, Miss, Madam, uh, Ma'am. Mary. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Ted. <laughs> Maureen. Maureen, wake up. What is it, Joe? You still like me, don't you, Mo? <laughs> yes, Joe. Go to sleep, Joe. Maureen. Maureen. Deep down, most of the party wanted me, didn't they? Yes, Joe. 
John Crosby wanted to support me, didn't he? Why don't you ask him? John? John. John Crosby. Wake up. Ah, uh, bye, Dave. Bye, bye. You wanted to support me, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, sure, Joe. Go to sleep, Joe. Go to sleep. Do you think Crombie still likes me, John? Well, I don't know. You'll have to ask him yourself. Hey, David, wake up. <laughs> David, Crombie. Well, what do you want? You still like me, don't you? Yeah, of course, Joe. Um, go to bed and don't take all the covers. David, David. <laughs> Do you think Mulrooney will keep his promise to give me a good position? Oh, go ahead. Ask him. Mila! Mila! Oh, John, yes! No, no, it's Joe. Wake up, Brian. Wake up, Brian. I, I want to ask him something. Brian, honey, Joe wants to talk to you. What? <clears throat> oh. Oh, turn off well, the light. Off alive. Shh. Uh, I have a question. Brian, you promised to give me a good position. Right. You do keep your promises, don't you? Sure I do. After all, I kept my promise to really unite the party, didn't I? Did you ever? Oh, good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. Has anyone here heard Dan Hill? I must confess, I play his record still. It's been a long time since he cried on my car radio. 30 or 40 times a day, it used to be that way. Oh, Dan, I know all your songs and all your chord progressions. And I've memorized all the minor sevens from A to G. Cry one more time for me, Dan Hill. Why not sing about the girl that broke your heart while the violins play up real high? And you sing lines that are out of meter and don't rhyme. Cry one more time for me, please, won't you, Daniel? And all those jokes people make about you Well, they just aren't true They're just jealous Cause they can't make money Crying like you Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You've been listening to Frantic Times, conceived, written, and performed by the Frantic, Don Redican, Paul Chattel, Rick Green, and Peter Wildman. Special guest this week was Mag Rothman and sound effects were by Kathy Perry. Technical production was Brian Dawes and Mike Furness, and production assistant was Deborah Coffin. It was produced by David Milligan in the beautiful Blue Orchid Room at the Ontario College of Art. Don't worry, I'll be there at the next Tory convention. You just wait and see. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>